lady in the trap, yeah, the ladies get in the trap with their fellas and they hold them down and she one of them, you know what I mean? She one of the girls gonna hold you down. You smell me? You feel that, don't you? You feel that, don't you? So we have in the trap today another TDE member. Um, one of my favorite ones is Schoolboy Q. How's it going? Your favorite one. <laughs> okay, then. We'll edit that one then. No. My favorite one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had um, J Rock a few weeks ago, who obviously had a great year, but this is. <laughs> This is um oh so you're trash talking J Rock yeah. <laughs> well, it is all about crash talk right now. This is your fifth studio album, and I mean you just keep topping the previous one every time. For me, I feel like when I really really bought into you was Oxymoron because I then saw you perform it live, and yeah. I don't know if you remember, but in London like the mosh bits were absolutely crazy. <laughs> Man, I tell everybody about oxymoron times, man. I don't remember nothing. Okay, so it was, was that so time. I was so high. Like, I was, like, um, on a lot of drugs around that time, you know? So I don't remember shit from oxymoron. Like, not a fucking... But do you credit it for it being a highlight of your career in terms of for your I don't fans. know shit I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> but I, don't remember. I mean from what people around you tell you and from the success I, f I feel like it definitely put you on a on a different level and I feel like you gained a lot of fans from Oxymoron. yeah I know for a fact that was like my uh, you know what I mean that was like my mm -hmm. you know I know that but um yeah I was doped up I was doped up but now, of course, Crash Talk is about coming out of that. And yeah, but I was I was off of it like with a uh, blank face too, though. Like, right. like um, I really wasn't on drugs. I was like making my way off of drugs with blank face. I really was. I would do. I would like fuck around like every blue moon type shit with blank face. But I really wasn't doing drugs like that, you know. Okay. Like if a friend was to bring something, then I would. But I wasn't like. Excuse me. Um, and that's where I get um, on Dangerous too, where I'm like, how many friends around helping you lose and shit like that. You know, like I, I was quit drugs, but a certain friend would come around and he may have something or a little pill. And I'm like, that little pill ain't going to do shit. Let me take it. I'll take it and weed. You know what I mean? Okay. But um, yeah, now crash. I mean, I ain't done shit. I'm, I'm a way different person. You know what I mean? Like, but that situation where you just talked about is how a song like Dangerous came along with Kid Cudi, which is yeah. definitely a highlight. Um, as you said, having friends around you, helping you lose, like that, that yeah. line really stood out. So is it a case of you dropping out certain people or was it really just I yourself mean, yeah. helping yourself kind of thing? Yeah, um, I weaved a lot of people out of, my, out of my life, but at the same time, some of the people that I should weave out of my life that's still in my life, um, I just don't let them control it anymore. I'm such a loyal person and um, somebody can do some evil or fucked up shit to me and I still fuck with them. Which is, you even said that in your album, you said something like, loyalty is not slavery. Yeah, right? my loyalty is slavery. That's what pretty much who I am. Yeah, but in terms of the, the rest of the album, the, well, the way you, the album kicked off, it was kind of like a continuation of, of Oxymoron with Gang Gang. Like you have DJ Fu on the production and, and JBO right there, ear drummers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so then how, I, I like the switch between the first track and the, and the second track. How, how did the, the whole piecing together of the album come about? Like, I know you mentioned all the time that you really listen to people like Kendrick, J Rock, like your TDE members members are really like important ears for you <laughs> he's not feeling a black hippie vibe today <laughs> no, no, no i know you're joking um, kendrick put all my albums together though. i don't know how to do that shit man i just like rapping you so know? is that actually is that really something you you don't like to do i just don't like doing it it's just boring man like <laughs> you know what i mean it's boring like that shit boring like putting songs together and like Cause I don't know. I'm. I think cause I'm like a kind of a fan of my own music, and I've been spoiled with uh, the the gift of like I can hand my album off to one of my homies and let me see what you come up with. That's how I kind of started off. Like I, I put my album together. It's like why don't you try putting my album together for me? Like we in the studio every day. Like yeah. I think that's how I started. And then ever since now, Dot just always want to put all my albums together. Yeah, it's and kind I, of having fresh ears as well. And yeah, fresh, yeah, yeah, and I get to walk away from the album 
for a week and I come back and it's like, oh, listen to this. Yeah. How, how I did your album. And it's like, oh, shit. That's kind of hard. All right, maybe uh, let's change this or let's change that. Yeah, it's a new perspective. It's funny. Cause you know what I mean? Yeah, because you being there. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, no. It's funny. It's, my mother just asked me today. Like, they're painting the outside of the house and yeah. they live in a different country. So I don't see what's happening. And yeah. she showed me. She was like, what do you think? This, what color should it be? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like having fresh eyes and fresh ears because yeah. you sit with your songs for so long. Yeah. That Everything gets stale almost. Mm -hmm. Everything. Like, I'm so over crash talk. You know what I mean? Like every time I, by the time I drop the album, I'll be over it. Like, but uh, you can't be. <laughs> you gotta perform that first. <laughs> I mean, it's different. Performing is different because you get feeding off the energy. Well, yeah. That's, that's why right. it, when I be telling fans, like, bro, don't come to a show if you a fucking boring ass fan. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't stand those shows. You get that in the states a lot. Like boring ass shows. Like, that's why a lot of artists like coming to Europe because the shows are way more funner than in the States. Like, yeah. People in the States are so boring, bro. Like, it's I can't honestly, 80% of the shows in, in the US are boring. That's it's only interesting. a 20% market, like, where it's like fun in the States. Just like they wilding out, they going up, they having fun. They don't care. But for the most part, people just like, they pay their money and they just like, boring bro like even in your hometown oh yeah la is the worst damn la is the <laughs> worst my last la show was kind of tight though do you ever call them out because me as yeah, a dj i, I always call them out yeah, like i, I can't do. stand miserable people on the dance floor like i literally stop the music and like yeah, why yeah, did you guys I, come out <laughs> always 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 i mean you have to you have to rather they they, they think you I mean, you're going to get backlash from it, maybe, like, on social media. But, who but cares? you know, like, this dweeb shit. You put your phone down, it doesn't exist no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, all I do is turn my phone over like this and wait three hours and somebody else will be done fled that shit, flooded it. And I don't have to see nothing you said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, when I start scrolling through and I see some bad shit or something, I just be like, all right, enough of that. I may block everybody that was talking shit. And then I would, like sit my phone down for an hour and next thing you know it's flooded with a whole bunch of new <laughs> Like another something else is bothering yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. And it's like you like it's like that's why I be looking at social media and like people that be getting mad and like argue and constantly vitting on it. It's like, bro, go outside, talk to real people, go have fun because the shit is fake, bro. Like Yeah. Like you come all like people i don't know man no i completely agree and i mean you're strong enough to put it down but for some people it's an addiction and you know the same way you might have said you were under the influence of of drugs or alcohol the same it's the same thing with picking up a device and and going online and scrolling through things it is a habit picking up your phone like i mean there's even a feature now which tells you how many times you've picked up your phone how many apps like uh. how many times you've logged into certain apps you know it's I feel like it is a bit of a crisis right now. So it's, it almost feels like people need to go to rehab for this. Yeah, this shit is, um, I mean, we all addicted to it. We all, Everybody in this room is addicted to social media. How you, everybody. How's your daughter, do you monitor that, her, herself on social media? Because I know you're quite, you let her be very liberated with her choices, but. Yeah, but I, I, I'm not letting her have her own social media till she's like in um, high school. Definitely. Good and choice. she can do whatever she wants. Yeah, good choice. But uh, right now, nah, not like controlling it, like her. Yeah, nah, nah. You just open yourself up to so many different energies, and it's it's, it's unhealthy. Yeah, it's, unhealthy. it's not, man. It's social media, dude. It's, I don't even know how. I don't like the shit. That's how I know it's terrible. I don't even like social media, and I'm addicted to it. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's it comes with the territory yeah like i don't even post like like i may do on the story that's it like but like actual like instagram posts i don't post mm. you know what i mean like somebody else will post for me or some shit but, but i don't post so it's like um and i'm looking at this shit every day <laughs> no, <laughs> you're just there saying? like, like creeping <laughs> yeah like pretty much like and i'm like um a ghost follower yeah, I like a. I'm like a. I like. I just look for funny shit, and I realize people are not funny. 
like people like just try to give you motivation now like that's that's everybody other thing or motivational speaker or somebody depressed anybody want somebody wants some sympathy you know what i'm saying like it's just a bunch of bullshit and it's like not real feelings no more everything is a tv show everybody want to be famous you know that's what i look at when i see that shit so i just be looking for funny shit so that's why i'm addicted to it i'm not addicted to it from no even though i follow more women than anything because uh. I think it's kind of weird to follow a bunch of dudes. So, <laughs> so I randomly okay. just be clicking on, oh, if a woman half naked, I may just click follow, 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 follow. Oh, you're in that trap. <laughs> but oh, not no. like that. <laughs> but listen, that sounds weird. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. Let, let, let's round that one up. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying, though, it's like, bro, like I'd rather look at a woman's ass than somebody giving me some fake-ass motivation. Like, go get up and go do it right now. You got to do it. It's like... I'm going to do it right now. I'm already doing it. But for some I was doing people. it before you even wrote it. Like, <laughs> but, you, you know what I'm saying? I was already there doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, I'd rather just like, okay, I ask, scroll. I don't even like the pictures. Yeah, I don't, I don't, just I'm just saying, like, I'd rather see a woman on my timeline than a male. I just said it a little weird that it's I would cool. rather... Uh, <laughs> So when, that's not the case. Okay, so when do you think, though, it's all going to crash, speaking of crash talk? Because you say every time you almost, like, hit the peak of something or, like, you're doing good in something, you just crash, which is kind of, like, the inspiration to this album. When do you think that's going to happen in social media and the nature of it? Social media is here to stay. It's over. You think? Nothing we can do. I just have this theory that now we're going to start, like paying for privacy like people are going to start like having certain privacy apps or privacy yeah, as you say I, mean, I think they're going to start uh pe people going to start going to rehab for social media if they haven't already mm. you know what i'm saying like yeah. I, I notice every time i'm with people like friends and stuff like after 10 minutes everybody's got their head down looking at their phone yeah. Even now, motherfuckers probably like, no, they're good. They're, in they're, they're they're engaged. <laughs> Both of them got their phone in their hand right now. <laughs> you see what I'm they're, they're gonna start needing like neck therapy. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's true. I feel like you know we all develop certain like aches and pains from these things. You know, it's not just mental; it's even physical. Yeah. You know, your posture starts to change, your demeanor around people. Yeah. You know, people start acting weird because they don't know how to be in social environments. Yeah, but uh, it's it a gets, bit crazy. It gets, yeah, it gets weird, man. You it didn't like, yeah, like I said, it's fake, man. So yeah. well, even the motivation is fake, cause it, you if you if you if you get motivated by doing this, and then when you put it down, you still motivated when all this real life is around you. No, you're, you're right. You're you have right. a mental illness, man. It's a, it's a mental illness. Like you really like get motivated from like this when there's all this fucking motivation just standing around you, like. <laughs> you know which is more real and uh, yeah uh, like people go in march and shit they go do marches and shit uh, rallies and shit they go do rallies like oh we gonna do this march this and all the bad shit is happening in your neighborhood it's like why are you going way over there when you it's right here like just go you get what i'm saying yeah like, no, like right. almost like with gang violence and shit like they rather worry about the rapists all the way in Texas when it's a rapist, like 10 of them right around the fucking corner. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's all fake. It's all fake. Everybody's just weirdos and warped out. So, yeah, people need to be in tune with their actual senses. Yeah, that's yeah. why I try. I, I think every now and then you, sh you should give a little something. Like, every now and then I may say some shit, like some motivation shit. But for the most part... I think laughter is way more can cure than somebody saying, "Oh, you can do it too." You laughing, keeping me in a good, me, keeping me in a good spirit, makes me want to go outside. Makes me want to, you know what I'm saying? Do other shit, but just saying you can do it, you can do it. All that shit is like, yeah, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, and you never really do it because it you almost got, gives you anxiety. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> which is let like me watching exactly. me watching gym workouts like that. That gives me anxiety. I'm like, no, no, she's doing yeah. too much. <laughs> Yeah. Like and then another workout video and another one and another. I'm like, no, I'm t I'm tapping out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, uh, I think laughter, nothing defeats laughter. Yeah, you're that's right. That's the high. That is God to me. Laughter is God, man. You can't tell a nigga nothing when he's laughing. 
It's like it's the best time. Like it's nothing wrong when you're laughing, because you can't get that out. You wouldn't be able to get that out if you were even thinking a negative thought or even having some anxiety or anything. You wouldn't be able to laugh like a real laugh, maybe yeah. a fake, uh, you know, conversation fake laugh. Uh, but a real laugh is a whole different feeling that yeah. nothing can't stop. So the more you laugh, the more you smiling the more you're going to stay motivated. Yeah, you know it gives you endorphins. Like, yeah, the more you're going to want to be around people. That's why I always like being the funny guy. Like, I'm going to always talk shit. If you're a guy that don't like being talked about, then, man, it's your yeah. problem, bro. Go somewhere else. Well, speaking of <laughs> <laughs> laughter and making you smile, I remember that, that kid that was dancing to Water featuring Lil Baby. Do you remember? <laughs> that was, That really made the world smile. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she she going up right now. That little girl had like twenty five thousand followers. I like fifty. She had like two hundred thousand followers. Now. Yeah, it's oh, crazy. shout out to her, man. Zaza, man. Is that shout out to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot her Zaza. name. I got to get her for the video, man. You oh, you must have into that. Yeah, I just been moving around. I haven't shot no more videos lately. I've been moving and, and moving and grooving, man, and being a daddy and stuff, but. I'm yeah. gonna I'm I'm shoot that water video, man. I gotta shoot the water video. I gotta get Zaza in there. I almost don't even want to be in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it all to her. So that's yeah. officially your next single. I mean, I don't pick singles, man. Whatever, go, go. I don't care. I think you know we mean? picked it. Then it must be that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't really care. Like, um, yeah. At this point in my life and career, it's like whatever. Of course. Um, but yeah, um, I'm def. I gotta get her in the video. I'm gonna be hot if she don't do it. She got to do school that day. She has to. No, you got to do it. Her, her parents cannot decline that offer. <laughs> you said um, you, uh, earlier on in the interview, you know, you just like rapping. That's that's you. You just like yeah. being a rapper. I mean, you display that in track two, Tales. Like, you really go in. Like, if people have been overlooking you, as soon as they hear Tales, they can really pick out some some dope stuff there. Like, you are really rap elite in this industry, in this, in this music game where a lot of people are just making disposable music you know you always come out with projects that have um, a concept uh, you know you always talk about real shit real shit that's happening where you're from wherever you are going to you know you pick up on issues that that are happening um and you even close out the album with you know you receiving certain credit from the greats which yeah. you've looked up to um and apparently um, I even had a question from someone on Instagram who's asked, who would you have loved to collaborate with or would love to, dead or alive? Man, I get that all the time and nobody. I would never want to collab with But you've had so many features a, on your album. Yeah, I would never collab with a dead man. I would never want to collab with a dead man. Um, I don't and, think we would. <laughs> um, Hypothetically speaking. Also, um, Kid Cudi was the only person I was like really wanted to work with, and I worked with him. So I really don't have nobody on my list. Mm -hmm. I mean, I go with the flow, like you know what I mean. Like water, I was just like, oh, you know, I like Lil Baby. I like his music. So you know, I thought he fit on the song. Okay. So I was like, you know, what, let's get Lil Baby. It's yeah. like that type of thing. It's like spread a moment type of thing. Like, yeah, oh, of course. Such and such would be hard. I know I was doing that mainly on this too. I didn't want to have a bunch of three verses. Like all my other albums are long two verses. I was like, I want to get more features on here. Just branch out a little more than I normally do. Speaking of branching out, I've noticed you have a lack of female presence on this album. Lack of female presence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What can you say to that? Was that intentional or would you have liked to have some estrogen in there? No. Why? Because every album shouldn't be about just like having a woman on there just because she's like a woman. No, it's not not, not <laughs> to make it a point, just to create a bit of balance. And nah. I'm not knocking it. I'm saying uh, like, was that intentional? Or was yeah, it? that was intentional. Not right. this album. You know what I mean? Like every album can't like just, you know, got to switch it up, man. I may do it. I want the album with just nothing but female features, you know? Okay. Like, I think it's just um, timing. Yeah. Right now, I, I, that, I don't see where a woman would have fit on that album. Yeah. 
I mean, it's again, it's not something that like stood out to me or like I was offended by or anything no, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, oh, hang on. Like I haven't heard a female voice like throughout yeah, the yeah. whole thing. But again, it doesn't stop you from getting the female fans at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for sitting in the chat with me. We've actually got to wrap it thank up. You, it's a quick you, one. Thank you, so thank you. Crash it. Talk is definitely one of the best albums so far in 2019. Oh, yeah. oh, and I'm yeah. sure you're going to continue making good projects, great projects moving forward. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that.